Oh, looks like what I got here is a tri-tip roast. It's a wonderful cut of meat. It's got lots of nice intermuscular fat. It is an excellent candidate for the ugly drum smoker. And uh, take a look here. One, two, three. Tri-tip. You are going to see some moisture on there after you open it up. And we're going to dab that off. Just dab, 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 dab. We don't want that. Um, it's what we would call mystery moist, and no one likes mystery moist. And I would say uh, to my friends that trimming a tri-tip is a highly optional activity. I did go ahead and trim off a few things here. Uh, looking for silver skin, don't want that. And any kind of anything that you would consider to be a dangler, anything that you would call a dangler, you would you'd want to cut that off. So, but really, no big deal. If you just skip this step, I highly doubt you're going to notice a difference in the end product. I was lucky enough to get one with the fat cap on it. Uh, I would consider that a positive. It's a nice pillowy fat. It's not hard fat. It'll be delicious. I should be making my own flavor busters, my own, my own spice shakes. But this stuff, this McCormick's Montreal Steak Seasoning is so good. Okay, I use it a lot and it's just it's so good it's a lot of uh, salt and pepper and garlic you do whatever you want okay leave me out of it just make sure whatever you do there's plenty of salt you want salt okay and just make sure you get a nice even coating of whatever seasoning flavor buster combination you're going for now it's your responsibility to make some mental notes about which way the grain is running because it runs differently on different parts of the roast. Here it's running that way and other places it's running that way. So just remember that when you go to cut it you want to be cutting against the grain. Alright so I'm putting this in the fridge for 24 hours. They call this a dry brine. This is going to allow that salt to get deep into that meat in a way that is going to be so tasty in the end. I do believe that it also does some science to the meat that results in a juicier end product. And here we are, 24 hours later, and the meat turns super red. It was already red, but now it's even more red, and that's probably because of the science that's happening to it. And let me tell you, this thing's going to be juicy. I'm going to use lump charcoal. It's real pieces of wood, hard wood, that have been charcoalified. I think that you'll get more flavor from this. Uh, briquettes are cool, but if you've never tried this stuff, give it a try. I highly recommend it. I used a product called Fatwood to light the charcoal. It's a really sappy piece of wood. Um, honestly, it was a pain. So you'd be far better off just using uh, a charcoal chimney and lighting a few putting them on top of the big basket of charcoal they call that the minion method and it works great I don't know why I did it this way but it did work so now we're just gonna get this lit and put it into the barrel almost forgot that I wanted to throw a couple applewood chunks in here get them in there I don't want direct heat so I'm putting a bunch of bricks on this first grate that's going to save the meat from being attacked by the, the fiery blaze that is coming from below. And what it's going to do is those bricks are going to warm up and let that heat come through, but in a way that is slower and more even. So the meat will cook from below, but it will also cook from above while that hot air is circulating from the sides and circulating over that meat. It's going to cook very evenly. It works great. I've done it this way many times. Okay, so the tri-tip has landed. Fat cap up. We're doing that because as that fat renders, I believe that it will render into the meat in a way that's going to be uh, very delightful. I'm putting one temperature probe next to the meat. That'll tell me the temperature of my grill. Getting it that point as close to the meat as I can without touching it. And of course, I'll put this other probe into the meat so that I know when it's done. We're going to try to keep our cooking temp around 250 to 300. We are going to cook this to 135. 
Okay, so 130 is when the fat starts to render. So when you get close to 130, you want to slow it down. You want to bring your grill temp down as close to 200 as you can get. You want to milk those last five degrees because that's when that sweet, sweet fat rendering magic is happening. You don't want to rush that. That's the magic. You need that. This is why I love cooking roast slow and slow. Okay, 135 is what we're reading in the middle. 138 is what we're reading towards the surface. So it's only a three degree difference. It's going to be cooked so evenly. It's going to be wall to wall pink. There's not going to be any stupid gray band around it. So I took it off the grill. I let mine rest for 15 minutes. 10 minutes would probably be fine. You're going to want to tent it in foil. You don't want to wrap it in foil. Just tent it. Keep it warm, but you don't want it to keep cooking. All right, let's see how we did. And just look at that. Look how evenly that's cooked. Here's the real moment of truth, the bite. And let me tell you, it is just looking so juicy. That fat has just rendered so nicely and so evenly. It's so mm. tender. There's so much flavor it's throughout so from that dry brine we mm. did. I just love it. It's so good. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Comment with any questions or tips that you might have for me. Uh, and subscribe if you want to see more like this. There's going to be a lot more to come.